States mm -hmm. and uh, one of your favorite activities is to carry a cardboard that says you are perfect and you go through the streets of your city mm -hmm. and show this to the cars and to the people. Mm -hmm. Why? I had a really bad day one day and I had remembered meeting a homeless man in the year 2000 who would say this to people. He would just sit on the corner and say it and I asked him why he did it. Um, and he said that he's the only person he can't see. And so if he says you're perfect and you feel it, it reflects back to him that feeling. And so it's like a mirror, kind of like a reflection. And so I remembered this somehow and I made the sign. I thought, well, maybe this will make me feel better. And I'm in San Francisco and I go out onto the main street on Lincoln Avenue and I sit down. And at that time I wasn't even watching people. I was just doing Zazen, like sitting there and the sign was sitting against me and I was just sitting. And this woman pulls up and she says, rolls down the window and she says, excuse me, and she's crying. And she said, thank you so much. I really needed to see that. And at that moment, <laughs> and at that moment it was like, it, something, something just was like, yeah, yeah, this is, this, is, this is more than just for me, or it's more, I don't know, it just had this explosion of do this. That was one of the instructions, like do this. And so I did it a couple more times and then I moved and then I had it in my window where I lived and then um, in like 2008, 2009 I just started doing it pretty much every day. I try to do it every day. I don't always make it out there but and I've been doing it for two years. How is the reaction of the people? It's um, usually it's like 40, 40, 20 so 40% of the people will be like yeah you know and 40% won't care like they won't really do anything and some 20% will be like yeah nobody's perfect or you know grumble grumble or even some people be like fuck you you know <laughs> which is great because it's perfect you know I, I really get to learn a lot of um, surrendering all of that social approval stuff you know the fears that seemingly I've had of what are they gonna think or what's gonna happen or what are they what are they judging me or how are they judging me and I just learn like I don't know I don't get to know what that is and I'm not in charge people can think whatever they want who am I to tell them they have to like me. Nobody has to like me. That's my job. You know, that's a Byron Katie line that I really love. Like, it's my job to like me. So I learned that by standing out there. And in the beginning, it was scary, but now it's easy. So you think that everybody is perfect, indeed? Well, there, there's perfection. Things just are the way they are. So what I notice is these words do something for a person. It seems like somebody can encounter them and really something can happen that, that I'm not in charge of, but they feel better in a way that is deeper than just like you give them ice cream. Um, there was a young man, a woman told me recently that her cousin was really depressed. He wanted to commit suicide. And I give out these little postcards and he walked to the house and he saw it on the refrigerator and he just stopped and looked at it for a while and was like, oh, okay. And then she said he, he stopped being depressed. And so, I didn't do that, but this, this message can really do something because perfection is so, you know, it's so audacious, it's so not like perfection, no way, you know, we can't be perfect. And it's like, well, it's just the way it is. So it's not even like perfect, even perfection is a little bit of a stretch, it's the way it is, but this word does seem to, to do something for some people. And I love it, I mean, it's how I see it, I mean, it's perfect, it's perfect, it's perfect. Underneath all of the stuff and turmoil and sort of struggle of being a person is this calm kind of clear place that everyone is and so I like reminding people of that and it feels really good for me it's very selfish I hold the sign because I love it when people feel good it just feels it fills me up tell us more about this quiet place you just were talking about
Well, to talk about it kind of defeats the purpose. <laughs> uh, it's kind of like everything that happens in a person is kind of like clouds. Like a thought is like a cloud, and an emotion is like a cloud, and a feeling is like a cloud, and a sensation is like a cloud. But what a person really is, is the sky. They are the space in which everything passes through. But this is poetry. No one should believe me. This is something to discover simply by being with yourself and trusting yourself and investigating your own experience. Everything passes through except for you. And it's so easy to watch. If you look at the sky, the sky never moves. The clouds move and the airplanes will go by and sometimes the, the Coca-Cola billboard and lightning and thunder and, or sunshine. But the space in which it all happens doesn't move at all. And so it's sort of a poetic way to try to talk about what's this, what's that. And it can't be talked about because it isn't a word. So we can do this around and around and around and around and around. And at some point, maybe it creates enough of a momentum, like a whirlpool. And it's, oh. I don't know. I don't know. There's not really, I don't think there's any method or something that people can do or it just, I notice that if I sit there, there's something that isn't moving at all. There's something that isn't an object. Uh, when did you come to discover this quiet place? I don't know if I discovered it because it's what this is, because otherwise, so the simple answer, I guess, would be um, in 2008, I had a really like hard, hard couple of months and I was very depressed. And I went out onto my deck where I lived in the mountains and very sincerely whispered up to the stars, God. And nothing happened. And that's sort of what the sky is, it's the nothing that happened. And there was a lot of crying and emotions. And but this is another one of those stories. You know, there's all these little stories of people and their event where something happens. For some people, there's no story. There's just sort of a shift or a gradual change. Or for others, you know, all of our stories are, are just stories. So it's useful in some ways to tell them, but it's also useful to not believe them. Because otherwise we start to think, well, shit, I need one of those. That has to happen to me. And that's not true because that space is always here. And even this event where the personality shifted or went from confused to not confused is something that happens in that space. And that space is so easily and obviously listening to this sound. Whatever is seeing the video is that space. Whatever is seeing the face is that space. There's nothing, there's nothing that can be done to get there because it's already the one thing that's here. So I would call this the enlightenment trap. You don't have to have, you don't have to, to live such a moment. No, no. And you don't have to wait until such a moment happens and think you only will be happy when such a moment happens to your life if you are a spiritual seeker. Right, no, not at all. The worst thing that can happen is that I will think that that happened to me. The worst thing that can happen is to take some kind of an awakening experience personally because that's not the case. It's not personal. This is a momentum of, uh, that looks like it's moving. And included in that momentum is it looked like something said God and there was no answer and then there was this shift of from confusion to clarity. But that didn't happen to anybody. It just happens. So it's taking enlightenment. Like enlightenment doesn't happen to a person. Enlightenment is the end of life being personal to that, that sense that it, and I'm separate. 
or that sense that this is personal. Really, that's the only way I can think of to say it. This isn't personal. It has nothing to do with, with Benjamin Smythe or, or anybody. And that's, that's the trap, is people who are seeking look out and they go, well, look, it happened to so-and-so. It's like nothing happens to a person. What, is, what seems to happen is the sense of a person being personal just disappears. Which is why it's disappointing, because it doesn't help life at all. Suffering still happens and life still happens, but there's nothing that takes it personally. There's nothing going like this or, or trying to get more stuff. It's just life. It's just this. There's like a transparency. It's like that those events now go through you. Sure. That's what, I mean, they're, yeah, you could say it that way, I guess. It's just that they happen. And, and it's fast. It's like kind of like a child. You know, a child feels it like, wang. You know, and they just feel it all, and it's, it's like that. But it's not personal. It's not like, oh, this is how I do it. This is how it happens here. Very, very quick, very, very raw. Like, suffering is worse now. That's the thing that's, you know, it's like, oops. You know, like, you want enlightenment, well, be careful, because it's worse now. It hurts worse. Everything hurts more, because there's no filter. There's nobody taking it personally, so there's like, it's like there's no bouncer at the door keeping out the, okay, no, no, sorry, yeah, you, you look good, come on in. There's, everybody's invited into the party, and it's full on. So pain is more pain, and sadness is more sadness, and joy is more joy, and it's just not personal to somebody. Life becomes more intense? More, way more intense quieter in some ways and way more intense even as it's quiet. Could you say how you got to this place? No. Tell us the technique. <laughs> no. The recipe. No. No. There are plenty of people that are offering a carrot. I, there's, no, there's nothing anyone can do from these eyes because there's nothing, there's nobody here other than life being life. There's not something somebody can do. And many people can tr seemingly try to do all kinds of things. But from these eyes, no way. Because that's the trap. It's like, I have to do something. I can do something to somehow become more of what I am. Like, life is looking for life, and there's nowhere that it isn't. That's why seeking hurts so much. I'm looking for, what's, I'm looking for what is here. It's right here, and I'm looking for it. So if I stop looking for it, but even that, you can't, I mean, that still can sound like a method. So I don't, if I said do this, the, the, you might listen, and that's horrible. Because everyone knows. Everyone knows it's just trusting your own experience completely. And So hmm. this, this thing that you are talking about is just obviously already there it's already here and it's not any spectacular love or ecstasy it's just the normal the normal quietness or the normal daily being or how would you describe it well love and joy and bliss and feelings of connection and feelings of oneness and all of the stuff that seems to happen, that can all happen. It just doesn't happen to anybody. And it doesn't, it, it might not happen at all. The minute there's a requirement for a way that the sky has to look, then I'm waiting. You know, it's like I'm waiting for the thing that I think has to happen. A person is looking for something that they are. It's like trying to look at your own face. How are you going to see your own face? Look at your own face. I mean, how are you going to... I could do this forever, and my head will pop off and roll into the thing before I'll ever see my face. So the seeker is looking for their face, and they're already it. And this is very easy to say. This is very easy to say. 
So that can, it can, you know, it's not something to believe. It's just, that's why the search feels so frustrating. Because you're searching something that you already are. Because what is looking is what you're looking for. And you can never see that. I am fundamentally unknowable to myself. Fun fundamentally. I, d I don't know anything about myself at all. Because I'm not personal. I'm not... I'm not, I'm not a word, I'm not, I mean, there's, it's just, I don't know anything. I can't know, because what could know that is still the thing that, it's still, it's this, it's like, how do I look at myself without a mirror? How do I look at my own face? And that's what the spiritual search is. It's really running around, trying to catch a glimpse of my face. So it's something that everybody can can feel or can become aware of? I have no idea. Because the minute I say that, it becomes a carrot, and then it's like, oh yeah, I don't know, I don't know. I have no idea. It looks that way, but I don't know. So what is also very special about you is that you are a person that says, I will not charge for giving this message to people. And uh, you, in your videos, you make fun of those people who go in seminars paying to get this message. I, I'm not making fun of the people. I'm just poking at the whole idea that you can buy what you are. I understand the desire to, to be free of suffering. Because suffering hurts. There's no mystery about that. But the idea that the solution to suffering is something you have to purchase, that's part of what happens here. It's part of the perfection of what happens here. And I like to poke at it. Because whatever this is, it's totally free. It's already what everyone is, seemingly. And I can't charge you because I love you. Why would I charge somebody I love? Why would I charge anyone in the world for what they are? It's like, you're already it, and then I'm going to make you pay me something so that I can tell you, hey, you know what? You're alive. You already know you're alive. And maybe, yeah, yeah, it's just, it's just wild. It's wild. And it's part of what happens here. So I used to have a big problem with it, but now it's silly. It's silly. Why would I piss myself off? People will go and do whatever they do. They'll pay for free information until they don't. And that's okay. It's okay. I mean, I'm not in charge. I can't, no, this is right, this is wrong. I mean, that's bullshit. I'm not in charge. I happen to be a voice that simply says, hey, look, you know, you, you might not have to buy it. <laughs> but the minute I say, oh, no, you're full of shit, I mean, that's bullshit. I'm not, I'm not anybody special. I can't tell people what they should or shouldn't do. And I love to make fun of it, because I think it's crazy. <laughs> oh my gosh, it's like paying to, t it's like just like, it's like paying to clap your own hands. It's, it's just crazy. You can already do this. You're already this. What are we trying to buy? There are some spiritual teachers that give hope to the people, not mm. that they speak about enlightenment or about non-duality in a way that you, you, uh, you feel like you can have at the end more freedom, mm -hmm. more happiness, mm -hmm. more inner peace. Yeah. So would you say that you are not freer and happier and more peaceful right now than you were before? I don't know. I, I can't say that. All I can say is that it, there's not confusion. There's still suffering. There's still body gets sick. There's still sadness and joy. And, but there's just not confusion. It's like the rude awakening. You know, you, not, nobody gets anything. Nothing changes except there's no confusion. There's no big reward at the end. 
and but but it, it sells it's very useful for some people to think there is I just don't do that I don't offer anything there's no hope but there's also no hopelessness there's just sitting in a chair there's just life as it is So the people that want there to be a solution to the problems of being a person, that's perfect. And there are many people that will offer something for that. They'll say, try this method of meditation, or, or look and discover that you're awareness, or do this, or, you know, that's perfect. I just don't do that. Because from these eyes, there's nothing you can do. Because all of that ends up being a dis all of that ends up being tossed out the window anyway. I meet with many people who have gone to different gurus for years, and then they come and they're like, it was all crap. And it's like, well, it's not all crap, it's just nothing. It's still just, you're still just this. We're still just this, whatever this is. It's a big fucking question mark. I'm ultimately unknowable to myself, no matter how many practices I do, no matter what story I got locked up in here about what I am, no matter, fundamentally, it's a mystery, whatever this is. So what remains at the end is the question mark. Oh, yeah, that's a fun one. What remains at the end is not knowing. I don't get to know, and somehow finding comfort in the fact that I don't get to know. And that that comfort and that not knowing doesn't help my life at all. <laughs> it's learning, it's really the day, it's not, it's just, it's accepting. It's really accepting that this is the way it is. Fundamentally, this is the way it is. And that doesn't mean that if I have a thorn in my foot, I can't take it out. It doesn't mean that if I see suffering, I can't go over and try to help. It doesn't mean that if a car is coming, I don't jump out of the way. Right? There's an intelligence to how it moves. But there's not some ultimate solution to being alive. Because there's not really a problem. There's just this. So would you think it's, it's, uh, it's wrong to teach a method? I mean, would no. you say that every teacher who, has, who, who is telling you that you have to follow these steps mm -hmm. to go to this place or to go near this place is a bad teacher? I wouldn't say they're a bad teacher. And honestly, I, I would just, it's, it's what they're doing what they do. I mean, I don't know if even if they know any better. You know, I think that anyone who says there's a place I would just invite people to notice that anyone who's saying this, are they fundamentally selling something? Are they hoping you buy their book? Are, you, are they hoping you, you buy their DVD? Are, are you actually, in some way, are they, are they, is their life being paid for by this, by this offering? Is, you know, and there's nothing wrong with that, but that's just kind of useful to know. If, I want, if I'm going to go learn from somebody, I want to know, well, wait, wait, what is their motivation? What is their fundamental motivation? But there's no right or wrong. People will go, people will pay. It's all part of the show. I just happen to point out the fact that it's not necessary. But there's no, nobody can make a mistake. It's impossible. <laughs> it's like saying that flower shouldn't be there. You know, they shouldn't go to the retreat is the same as saying the, the tree shouldn't be that color. I mean, that's crazy. Given that, I also like to say, hey, you know, this is free. And you can find it in your closet faster than you could find it at a meditation hall. Because it's you. It's the easiest thing to find. Ready? <laughs> Here you are. <laughs> so, um, you, there is, in the spiritual seeking, a lot of people say that the ego has to die. <laughs> This is very funny for you. Oh, <laughs> 
What's so funny oh. about this? <laughs> I actually don't know. <laughs> I, I just... Uh, <sighs> I wish them luck. <laughs> Trying to kill this ego. Mm. <laughs> so, in your experience, in your experience the, the ego can't be killed or can't go away. What? What are we talking about? This ego that says mm -hmm. you are a separate person. Mm -hmm. This is what we would be talking about. Okay. Let me try to find it. Not sure, not sure what they're talking about. But before, you also said that this sense of being a separate person mm. tur turned at one point of your life to something impersonal. So the ego dies could be another way of saying that uh, the person, the, the personal turns into the impersonal. Well, what's fascinating is it was never personal. It was always impersonal. And there was this tiny little, this is personal, feeling. So maybe that's the ego. I don't know. I don't know. I don't know what, what that means. Kill the ego. Because I try to kill the ego. Ego is just I in Latin, so let's do it again. I try to kill I. How? What's, what's, how? Where's the separate thing that has to be killed? The fact that it goes from personal to impersonal doesn't happen to somebody. That happens to life. <laughs> it doesn't happen to a person. There was never a person separate from all of this, from this. So that's, that's, that's why the last, I mean, I just, I don't understand. I used to believe that thought. Kill the ego, kill the ego. You know, I used to sit there and try to kill the ego, and now it's just hilarious. Like, what is that? You were a Zen Buddhist? Well, I, I sat Zazen. I was never actually part of the, I didn't do any precepts or anything. Uh -huh. There are real Zen Buddhists, and I want to respect that, but. I sat and sat and sat and sat and looked and tried to kill that ego. <laughs> and it never, uh, yeah, it never died. Because it was never there. It was never different than life. So how are you living in, in Berkeley? Are you giving talks? Are you traveling around the world to give talks? Uh, are you willing to spread this message of mm. no personality, non-duality? Well, I just kind of do what I do, I think. You know, it just, it has its own kind of life. It doesn't feel like I'm doing it. We talked about this the other day, and like, I find myself inside of a life. Every now and then it's like, Whoa, what is going on? <laughs> So there's a trip, and there's, uh, yeah, I'm in Austria, and then I'll go to Sweden, and then there's some satsang scheduled, and, but I don't set anything up, I just accept invitations, and so that seems to, like, take all the pressure off, because I just show up and do this, and there's nothing that has to happen, because nobody's missing anything, nobody needs to come, it's, I mean, nothing, nobody's missing anything. So if it comes, great. If something, if we talk and, and somebody walks away going, oh, cool, whatever, or oh, that was bullshit. I mean, that's, it's all going to happen perfectly because it's already over. When you talk with people, what is it that you tell them? What is mm. the message that you are giving to them? The simplest thing that I think I notice I continue to say is to trust yourself. Just trust yourself. Don't trust me. Don't believe me. Don't 
believe, I mean, I can't tell you who to believe, but don't believe, just, just trust yourself. You'll do what you do anyway, but it seems very useful for people to, to meet somebody who's like, I don't fucking know for you, but I bet you do. Nobody on earth knows how to be this but you. Nobody on earth is that one. Nobody on earth is anybody else. Everyone is perfectly unique and fresh. And what if everyone's notes have nothing to do with the listener or with you or no matter how awesome it looks like that person is like esteemed in the spiritual circus no matter how high up how much money they have or how enlightened they look or how what if at the end of it all none of what they have to share has anything to do with you so that seems to be the thing I say over and over again because all I see are perfectly capable, beautiful expressions of life. So you need nobody to tell you how you should be living or what you should do in order to achieve uh, happiness or whatever? Or just to be alive. You don't even need me to tell you to trust yourself. I mean, in that way, what I, what I share is ridiculous. <laughs> I mean, it's, it's ridiculous. And it happens and it seems like invitations come so I, so I go but nobody even needs to hear I, I die like five seconds from now I die the world's fine I mean it's more than fine it's amazingly still perfect the way it is so nobody nobody needs anybody else and it seems like we're all here to kind of like eat and dance and play and encourage each other love our egos and our personalities sure there's no separation so sure you can try to love an ego the same way you could try to kill it that'd be just as funny <laughs> so are you giving uh, talks in Berkeley regularly no 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 I love meeting with people one-on-one -on -one, so I notice that I I meet a lot of people one-on-one -on -one. because each person is so unique and so it seems like it responds very naturally to each person. Um, there's a talk in December in Berkeley with the uh, East Bay Open Circle, and that's the only public one there. I don't really, yeah, yeah, I'll do it if I'm invited, but I don't. Now you're in Europe, you're making like a tour. Mm -hmm. uh, you called it the silent tour? Sure. Yes. Yeah, I'm real quiet. <laughs> Uh, are you planning another tour in 2012? Uh-huh, yeah. Yeah, and it's, uh, there's a lot of people who have already expressed interest, so... Um, basically, what I want to try to do is just live with people like we have been, and it's so fun. It's yeah. just living with people. We I mean, have been living together for one week, Yeah, and and we had a lot of fun. Yeah, and that's it. I mean, it's, that's it. There's no teaching, there's no nothing. It's just hanging out together, f playing and seeing the world and sharing and talking and learning together. I, so 2012 has, there's a lot of people that have expressed interest, and so that's already almost full. I have to check back with people in the fall to confirm, but, but there'll be another month in Europe, and then, um, yeah, places in the United States, and then a trip to Costa Rica, I think. Okay, so thank you. Oh, yeah, you're welcome very much. <laughs>